That looks super good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, today's video is a field test of the new GoPro Hero 8 Black as well as the Max 360. Um, I'm a pretty good subject for a field test if you're an average Joe. Uh, I don't offer any pro filming or editing, anything like that. I'm just a hobbyist, producing okay stuff, mainly ski videos. So for the average Joes out there, this video is more for you. So it's pretty important that you know my specs uh, of the device I'm working with as well as what I'm editing with. I'm using iMovie on a MacBook with a processor that's 2.7 gigahertz, um, Intel Core i5, as well as 8 gigabytes of RAM, and then the Intel Iris Graphics 6100. I used all the modes on the GoPro Hero 8, at least the preset modes that they have, recording all of them. So that includes um, you know, the standard 1080p mode as well as activity mode, slow-mo mode, and then 4K. I also um, only filmed in the 5.6K on the GoPro Max 360. I had a really difficult time um, editing this software but I was on the High Sierra operating system so you know it finally pushed me to upgrade to um, Catalina. That enabled me to um, be able to use GoPro Quick which uh, is much easier to edit all the different types of videos in there. Uh, the, the, what I mainly used GoPro Quick was for 360 editing and then exporting so that I could then edit that in iMovie. Once I was on the most current operating system for Mac, and then uh, also had the most up-to-date version of iMovie. Everything went pretty well, much better than previously. One thing to keep in mind is that iMovie will only export, someone can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but they'll um, export in 4K if the first file is in 4K. So if you're gonna use a mix of different file types and modes, um, I would have the first video in your edit as the highest resolution that you had filmed in. Buttery. I'm going to go over the pros of the Hero 8 Black first, but for reference before I start, the last GoPro I had was the Hero 6 Black. The jump from the Hero 6 Black to the Hero 8 was uh, quite substantial for me when it comes to the UI, so the user interface on the device. Um, I really like the Hero 8's um, improvements and tweaks to that. I also felt that the screen was much easier to um, touch and use after I put that you know, protective glass on it. It allows quick access to um, a lot of different types of filming. Slow-mo mode is uh, definitely my favorite. Again, doing mostly ski edits. So being able to push a button and then click record and then you have no worries when you're um, recording and you come out with a really smooth and high res image. Looks really great. Um, I'll have some of those labeled in this video. Another pro of the Hero 8 is how compact the device is. I mean, it's just awesome that they made the brackets to fold in and out so you don't have to have casing anymore. Um, you can just throw it in your pocket and forget it. For someone like me, that's really minimalistic. I love being able to just put it in my pocket and forget it and to bring it out and film whenever I need to. So there are some pros with the Hero 8 that um, trump the Max 360. Um, again, Referencing the editing that I do, it is mostly skiing um, or filming people skiing or snowboarding and um, the point of view is mostly free ride and steep terrain, so a lot of variability in the terrain as well. 
So when it comes to capturing the point of view in the eye of the athlete or just the person filming, I would choose the Hero 8 Black over the Max 360. Um, that goes as well for filming someone else, especially if you want them or a few other people in the same frame. I did run into one major con with the Hero 8 Black and that was the battery's functionality in the cold. I went out my first day with it and it was 15 to 18 degrees. Really excited for it. Turned it on and it was, it just completely glitched. It would record 15 seconds, shut off, press record, it would record 30 seconds and shut off. And then after about 15 minutes of record time, if even that, the, the battery just died. So went out a second day hoping that it was the temperature that caused the issue. Um, it was 32 degrees and it worked great, lasted all day, didn't have any problems. Um, that's where I have all the park filming that, that you see in this. Then I went out a third day and again I made sure all my settings were shut off that I didn't need turned on that could drain the battery. And the second cold day was also in the teens, 15 to 20 degrees. Same thing, battery glitched. But when the 8 battery died, I put my Hero 6 battery in and it worked awesome. I just pressed record and, and the rundown took about 25 minutes and it lasted the whole time no problem. The problem with using the 6 battery is that you lose some capabilities and settings that you get with Hero 8. So this could be a singular issue with my battery. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to order another one and check it out. If that one does work just fine in the cold, I will update that in the description. But if cold is an issue, then GoPro should probably rework the Hero 8 battery if I want to keep the actual Hero 8. If you guys have heard about this issue in the cold, just leave some comments below so we can kind of start getting a general understanding that the Hero 8 battery doesn't work in the cold, or it does, and my battery is just glitchy. GoPro has said that they don't cold test the batteries, but previous GoPros like my Hero 6 never had issues in the cold. It, they function just fine, so you would expect that from their new one as well. I had a lot of fun with the Max 360. It's the first time I've worked with the 360 camera. I think the camera is great for filming everyday things, things with your family, things with friends, um, just a lot of different things. I think it's great for filming uh, the park edit that you see in the video here. You get a really neat perspective of uh, what the rails look like to the rider, uh, as well as the filming jumps was really cool. You can fix the keyframe so it keeps the perspective forward and or points down at their legs or anywhere you want it to. So the camera doesn't spin with the subject, but you can see the subject spinning in the air. So that's not quite the point of view perspective you get from the Hero 8 Black, but it's a really neat perspective nonetheless. I think the Max is the best for overall production, especially um, considering how many different things you can film and make it really fun. Being able to have a keyframe at any angle is really awesome and once you get really good at editing that you can really make videos flow. The con, and this is just for me, is you lose perspective of the steepness when free riding. And I know for some this is not an issue, they would rather showcase and see the environment around the rider more than uh, see the perspective of the rider.
I know I've said this earlier in the video, but to conclude, choosing between the Hero 8 Black and the Max was actually quite difficult for me. I thought it'd be easy. I would no problem choose the Hero 8 Black, which I did in the end. I do choose that over the Max, but the Max is just super fun. You can do so much with it. But I am really specific in what I film. Uh, I only really want to film skiing and my buddies skiing and snowboarding. So for me, the Hero 8 Black is the better choice especially because I do want to capture my point of view when I'm hitting up some of my lines because a lot of my videos are more for memory just for me so I kind of want to remember what I saw through my eyes and the Hero 8 Black captures that best. Dude, that was incredible. That was awesome. Nice to hike with you again. <laughs> 